My name is Aaron Lopresti. I've been a comic book artist, a commercial illustrator, and a writer for over 25 years. And this is my YouTube channel. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti. I am, of course, Aaron Lopresti. Now, those of you who watch my other show, Aaron Live, um, may say, wow, Aaron, your clothes look exactly the same as the most recent episode of Aaron Live. And that is because I'm taping this right after I finished that. So um, I went, I, I, well, okay, let me put it this way. I've been watching some books on eBay that are fairly expensive books. And... They're taking some time to work through some things, seeing if I want to make some offers on them, see if, you know, some other auctions have come up that I was watching. And, and so time went by and I didn't have a book and I really felt like I needed to book. So I found something uh, very interesting that I was unaware of uh, from 1979, a Marvel book. Uh, very inexpensive, but of course I had to get it in a high grade, but even in high grade, it's very inexpensive. So, um, but I think it is of interest. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a unboxing video of this book. And then you guys can judge for yourself. Was it video worthy or not? I think any comic I buy is video worthy, but you know, that's for you to ultimately decide. But the only way we can find out how you feel about it is to open the thing up. So let's do it. Alrighty, this book uh, was mailed from the state of Washington, so it really didn't take very long to get here. Um, now, you, you know how you know this is an inexpensive book? Because it was not packaged in a box or a lot of ton of padding, just in a manila envelope. But there is, as I'm sitting here trying to twist it, you can't because there's plenty of cardboard in here to protect it. So good job, seller. Uh, for putting the right amount of protection in here to make sure this book did not get damaged. You know, I was going to slice it open, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to peel it open so I don't have to take the risk of actually slicing the comic, um, which I have done before and would rather not do again. Okay, so it's in a cardboard envelope, so I can go ahead and cut this. Uh, but we'll cut it. away from the cardboard that's in there already. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it's in a uh, <clears throat> priority mail <clears throat> envelope, which is fine, and there's cardboard in here. So this is nicely done. Uh, these priority mail boxes, or mail envelopes, they're not boxes, they're envelopes, actually do a nice job of holding the comic steady and firm. So you can go in there with, <clears throat> excuse me, you can go in there with two pieces of cardboard like this and then slide it in there and it really creates a nice firm package. This is nice cardboard. Uh, let's see, I don't want to reveal the cover. Okay, here we go. So it's a near mint book. He was originally uh, selling it for $20, um, ended up getting it for 14 bucks. So like I said, it's not, it's not a huge collector book, but it is one of, um, I think, great interest. And I'll tell you why in just one second when we reveal it. Um, so cut this tape. All right, and we'll take a look. All right. Are you ready for the big reveal? It is. Um, Marvel 2-in-1 Thing Battles Thing. This is number 50. You can see it was still only 35 cents. This is 1979. It amazes me that comic books went from 15 cents in 1971 to 35 cents in 1979. That was a total of, they went 15 cents, then they were 20 cents, then 25, and 30, then 35. So that's five price changes in eight years. And it's on the, about to go up to 40 cents because when it says still only 35 cents, that means that they're about to raise the prices again. So where you had in the Silver Age of comics, well, in the Golden Age, comics were $0.10 cents a piece forever. 
for decades. And then they became 12 cents a piece in the early 60s and stayed at 12 cents all the way through 1970 or 71 when they became 15 cents. And then once they hit 15 cents, they were like changing every year to two years, the price was going up. And it seems like it's continued to do that. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at this. Guy says it's a 9.4. Let's see if it actually is. It's very, there's a, a pen mark. I'm not sure. Um, can we see this right here? Yeah, there's a little ding right there, but it's a, it's white, so there's no color breaks. That's not oil that's severe. There's another one right there. See that? And there's another one right there and right there. Um, they're not color breaks. The corners on this are exceptional. So those little dents don't really bother me. And again, in a book of this value, it's like, who really cares? But just for the sake of grading, um, spine looks terrific on this. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any really, and again, remember the trick I told you guys, if you, if you rock it like this under the light and you get those reflection on there, those will usually show all like creases and dings and stuff. And this looks like a really, really beautiful, clean copy. Your corners appear to be excellent, square, um, no chips or no um, creases, no color breaks. Most of your damage on this book looks like it's on the back cover because the spine up front looks really, really good. There's a little bit of a ding right there underneath that staple, but it's not its not a color break, so really great. So like I said, I, I don't really care because it's only – I spent 14 bucks on this co comic, so it's not like it's the end of the world. But um, let's take a look. So this is uh, – John Byrne wrote it and drew it. And uh, let's see if we can get in here a little bit closer. And it was inked by Joe Sinnott. How about that? And published in uh, 1979. So that's good because I don't buy books post-1980, mostly. Occasionally I will. So this is a 1979 book, so it fits into my Bronze Age and younger collection scheme. So apparently what they're telling me is that uh, when I say they, um, I believe it was uh, Dan Fraga on The Professionals alerted me to this comic where he called it the uh, the rocky thing versus the oatmeal thing. So old thing versus new thing. And uh, it was a one cent sale. Buy this car at a regular price and get this car for one cent. I'd do it. How much could this regular, like three bucks maybe? 79? So anyway, Ben Grimm goes back in time and meets a Dan Fraga described oatmeal thing. There he is. There's the oatmeal thing. Uh, the only critique I have of Burns, I like the oatmeal thing a lot. This thing is a little too uh, human anatomy shaped for me. I like the thing to be more, I think actually this is a better depiction right here of what we kind of like the thing to look like. Um, but, you know, everybody does what they do, and I'm not uh, I'm not someone that's like hypercritical of that because I think Burns... Burns drawing of the thing, the face is where it, it matters, and he, you know, he's doing that right on the money. So, um, and it's kind of fun because um, with Sinnott doing the inking, it very much feels like uh, you know an issue of the Fantastic Four because Sinnott, of course, inked Kirby over a lot of the Fantastic Four, and then he inked Buscema on the Fantastic Four. Uh, there's a nice little cartoon of John Byrne right there. That's funny. Uh, get a free superhero poster. Start earning five to ten to twenty dollars a week selling your favorite comics to your friends and neighbors and schoolmates and earn valuable prizes too. Ooh, I want to do that. I want to sell uh, comic books to my friends. Uh, here's all these posters. Cheryl Ladd, uh, the Coneheads, of course. Farrah Fawcett, right here. That Linda Carter one. That's uh, that's an all-time classic. I wonder how much that 
I don't know if any of these posters are worth that much, but I'll bet money that when the Carter one costs some money to get it. Uh, and then, of course, remember uh, Susan Anton? Unless you're my age, you don't. I can't even remember what she was in, but I know she was really tall. And uh, I think she, she did a lot of TV acting, but I can't remember what she was ever in. Um, anyway, so we got some good thing, fighting thing action. So, again, it's the oatmeal thing versus the modern thing right here. I'm going to turn that light post into a noodle. That's what we call uh, super strength for sure. Man, there's more ads in here than there is a story. Um, oh, look at that. Look at that splash page. So you're a John Byrne collector, and you're asking yourself, wow, I wonder how much that page, the original art, would go for. Um, probably a lot. I don't even know anymore. The original art market has just exploded. Um, but they're promoting Power Man and Iron Fist, and then Howard the Duck, uh, number 30, I think it is. Um, Iron, well, he's, he's got his Iron Duck outfit on, so he's like Iron Man. Um, well, and spoiler, so the thing then goes back in time, leaving old Ben Grimm, lumpy Ben Grimm, uh, as Ben Grimm, and then uh, comes back to the modern day, smoking his cigar, folks, right there. Yes, baby. Ooh, next issue, Avengers Assemble. Uh, I think, I honestly think that this, uh, this series, Marvel 2 and 1, is a bit underrated and overlooked. It's uh, never quite got the fanfare that Marvel Team Up did because it was, you know, that was actually a second Spider Man title that Marvel Team Up was. And this became kind of like the things title, the thing to team up with characters. And I always like these team up books. They're usually self contained stories. And you got to see, you know, one of your favorite heroes, either Spider Man or the Thing, and you know, teaming up with another hero that you probably had never, you know, seen before. Like you know, Spider-Man would team up with a Ghost Rider and Werewolf by Night and Submariner and just all this crazy stuff. And the Thing did too. Um, I've got a few of these. I got the first one where the Thing battles the Man Thing. I've got one where he teams up with Daredevil. It has this classic Gil Kane cover. The one where he battles the Gollum uh, or teams up with the Gollum. So you know, I don't have a ton of them, but I do. Every once in a while, I'll see a book that from like Team Up or two in one that has a real interesting team up in it. And, uh, you know, and they're, they're relatively cheap books. Uh, the Marvel team ups are more expensive than the two in ones are, but you know, there's still neither one of them really other than the first issues are all that expensive to get. Um, so when I feel like I need to buy something and I don't want to spend a lot of money because I've actually got my eye on something more expensive, I will, uh, you know, Grab something like this to sort of entertain myself uh, while I wait for my big fish to come to the surface. Um, so there you have it. Marvel 2-in-1, number 50, Battles of Thing, advertises a 9-4. I'll totally accept that grade. Uh, I think it's in great shape. Uh, but again, like I said, a cheap book like this doesn't matter a whole lot, except that I'm sort of really sort of anal retentive about grades, and so i got to have my high grades. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Talking Comics and Art with Aaron Lopresti. I'd also like to alert you to the fact that I do have a graphic novel project called Kit Carter Planet Doom that is live on Indiegogo right now. You'll find a link in the description of this video that'll take you right there. If you haven't backed it, appreciate you considering doing so. Please hit the like and subscribe so I can continue to grow this channel slowly but surely. And someday we'll be, uh, you know, like Rupert Mur Murdoch. I'll be a, uh, a media mogul as my channel continues to grow. Uh, probably not. So anyway, thanks guys.